Hello everyone, welcome to another coronavirus update. As the novel coronavirus continues to spread across the world, we are still no closer to knowing what drugs or therapies will stop it. A lot of drugs and vaccines are under investigations. But today I shall discuss about why the chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine are extensively investigated and are trial against the SARS coronavirus to in humans. This topic will be discussed in later coronavirus updates as well as it's not possible to cover in one video. Hence in this video I will talk about the various in vitro trials that led to the final conclusion that these drugs could be trialed against SARS coronavirus too. And if you are new to this channel, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and keep watching. Both hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine have been approved as the safe and effective drugs to treat the malaria. But no large scale clinical trials have taken place in humans to prove whether these drugs are effective against the COVID-19. There have been considerable hype around the potential of the hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine to stop the spread of the coronavirus. While some have described these drugs as a possible game changer, others have reported serious concerns. So I will discuss today about the different in vitro trials, that means the trials that were carried out outside the human body that was tested to know the mechanism of action of these drugs against the SARS coronavirus 2, the efficacy of these drugs, and the potential effects in the human body. This was carried out through the analysis of the 50% cytotoxic concentration, multiplicities of infection, and the 50% maximal effective concentration. Before entering into the trials, it's important we know these terms. The 50% cytotoxic concentration means the concentration of the drug which results in 50% of the cell death. Similarly, the multiplicities of infection means the ratio of the virions to the host cells. And the 50% maximal effective concentration means the concentration at which the viral RNA increase is inhibited by 50%. Hence, the lesser the value of this concentration, better is the drugs. So let's begin with the trials. In a study conducted by Liu et al. titled Hydroxychloroquine, less toxic derivative of the chloroquine is effective in inhibiting the SARS coronavirus to infection and vitro, they found out that the 50% cytotoxic concentration of these drugs are not significantly different. To better compare the antiviral activity of the chloroquine and the hydroxychloroquine, those response curves of the two compounds against the SARS coronavirus 2 were determined by four different multiplicities of infection. By quantification of the viral RNA copy numbers in the cell supernatant at 48 hours post infection. And it showed that the 50% maximal effective concentration for the chloroquine was lower than that of the hydroxychloroquine and it was statistically significant at multiplicities of infection 0.01 and 0.2. These results were corroborated by the immunofluorescence microscopy as well. Taken together, the data suggests that the anti-SARS coronavirus to activity of the hydroxychloroquine seems to be less compared to the chloroquine at least at certain multiplicities of infection. In this study, they confirmed that the chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine both effectively inhibited the entry step as well as the post-entry stages of the SARS coronavirus 2. This drug produced the colocalization of the virions with early endosomes and endolysosomes as evidenced by the immunofluorescence analysis and confocal microscopy. Endosomes and endolysosomes are an important intracellular organelles that are essential for the membrane fusion. These drugs also block the transmission of the SARS coronavirus 2 from the early endosomes to the endolysosomes which appears to be a requirement to release the viral genome as in the case of the novel coronavirus. There are other studies that found out that the chloroquine acts as a weak basis that elevates the pH of the acidic intracellular organelles such as the endosomes and the lysosomes which are essential for the membrane fusion. In addition, the chloroquine could inhibit the entry through changing the glycosylation of ACE2 receptor and spike protein of the novel coronavirus. Due to lack of studies, the impact of the hydroxychloroquine on the morphology and the pH value of the endosomes and endolysosomes remains to be explored. 
The effect of the chloroquine against the novel coronavirus was also studied by Wang et al. In their in vitro study of the effectiveness of the chloroquine in the inhibition of the novel coronavirus, they reported that the chloroquine had an in vitro antiviral activity with higher selectivity for the SARS coronavirus 2 rather than the host cells. In contrast to the finding of the Liu et al. regarding the efficacy of the chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine, Another study performed by the Lau et al. regarding in vitro antiviral activity and projection of the optimized dosing design of the hydroxychloroquine for the treatment of SARS coronavirus carried out in Beijing, China, they found out that the hydroxychloroquine exhibited better in vitro SARS coronavirus activity than the chloroquine. This was demonstrated by the 50% maximal effective concentration values for hydroxychloroquine always being smaller than the values of the chloroquines, indicating that hydroxychloroquine has a potent antiviral activity. The inhibitory effect of the chloroquine was poor. This was particularly evident at 24 hours, whereby even at the highest concentration of the chloroquine used in the study, the inhibitory rate did not exceed 50%. Hence, the study concluded that on the basis of hydrochloroquine's superior antiviral and prophylactic activity, as well as its more tolerable safety profile in comparison to the chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine may be a promising drug for the treatment of SARS coronavirus 2. In addition, they noted that the 50% maximal effective concentration values for the hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine decreased with longer incubation times. This suggests that incubation time may influence the drug's antiviral activity. In a study done by the Quintat et al., they also found out that both hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine have been reported to accumulate in the cells. Similarly, another study done by the Ying et al. found out that it is possible that a longer incubation time may provide more time for the drug to accumulate to higher intracellular concentration and ultimately exhibit a better antiviral activity. Another study done by the Abdel Aziz et al. mentioned regarding this longer incubation time that the possible explanation about this is that the drug induced cytotoxicity may take time to develop and hence the drug effect may increase with the time. In the study done by the Huang et al. and Chen et al., they mentioned that in some patients, it has been reported that their immune response to SARS coronavirus 2 virus results in the increase of cytokines, interleukin 6 and interleukin 10. This may progress to a cytokine storm followed by a multi organ failure and potentially death. In this regard, the anti study done by the Severin et al. mentioned that both chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine have immunomodulatory effect and can suppress the increase of immune factors. Bearing this in mind, it is possible that early treatment with either of the drugs may help prevent the progression of the disease to a critical life-threatening state. In a study done by the Cheng et al., it was mentioned that in critically ill SARS coronavirus to infected patients, the use of the corticosteroid may be harmful. And the strand et al. study mentioned that the use of the immunosuppressants like tolicizumab may not be ideal as it can suppress the immune system and lead to increased risk of infection. In this setting, hydroxychloroquine may be an ideal drug to treat the SARS coronavirus infection as it can inhibit the virus by antiviral effects and help modulate the cytokine storm by its immunomodulatory effects. This positive effect of the hydroxychloroquine against the SARS coronavirus was also conducted by Yahweh et al. Hence, they recommended the concomitant use of the low-dose hydroxychloroquine with an anti-inflammatory drug to help mitigate the cytokine storm in critically ill SARS coronavirus to patients. The better part of this study is that they also designed the optimized dosing regimen for the hydroxychloroquine. Several clinical trials currently investigating the use of the hydroxychloroquine to treat the SARS coronavirus 2 use the dosing regimen based on the previous clinical experience, raising the concern that adverse effects may occur in study patients. In this study, Optimized dosing regimen was designed using appropriate modeling and simulation techniques to have a high loading dose and a low maintenance dose 
because of its unique pharmacokinetics. That is, this drug has high accumulation in the cells and long elimination half-life. The simulation results demonstrated that the regimen F was able to achieve treatment efficacy as well as have a good safety profile even considering possible underestimation of drug efficacy to some extent. Hence, future clinical trials evaluating this regimen are required before it can readily be used in the clinic. These were the in vitro trials that helped us to reach to the conclusion that the chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine could be used in the treatment of the SARS coronavirus 2. In the upcoming video, I will be discussing about the in vivo trials of the chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine, that is, the trials that were done in the humans to find out the effectiveness of this drug against the SARS coronavirus 2. And that's the end of the video. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button to get notified every time I post a video. Thank you.